Good afternoon, Harlem and Harlems of the world. I'm Terry Wisdom, and this is Harlem Network News. And as many of you know, Harlem Network News is a media platform that started at the onset of COVID, and we are still here. Uh, we know that news is, and information is critical. It's also very critical that we tell our own stories so the story gets told right. And that's what Harlem Network News is um, truly about. We um, reach out to Harlem and Harlems of the world, and that really encompasses the diaspora. diaspora. And of course, um, Harlem Network News is for everyone because everyone needs to be informed about untold stories. Um, so we inform, we engage, and we are about a call to action. Um, and that's what I can say is very important. It's very critical um, as the war in Gaza continues, as children and all kinds of people continue to lose their life. You mm. know, it's not necessarily front stream or mainstream media, but lest we not forget, we got to stay on it. You know, mm -hmm. and of course, there are many situations going around in the whole world, the Congo, the situations going on there. They're not in mainstream media, so it's almost like they don't exist. So we've got to continue to look at it. We've got asylum seekers here in this city. We've got to continue to look at that. Um, much, much for us to look at and support. Um, before we uh, actually get started, um, it is Women's History Month. And um, just a shout out to us, uh, amazing, amazing women, uh, amazing women of color, of course. And I want to give a shout out to um, and a salute to uh, one of our sisters who has become an ancestor. It's been one week. Her name is uh, Zenzi Wissett, Zenzile mm -hmm. Wissett. Um, she is out of Howard University. Um, a graduate um, in the, uh, I would say the mid uh, 90s. And she was formerly of Florida in the Hollywood and Pembroke Pines area. And most recently was in Atlanta. She's an amazing uh, singer, songwriter. Check her out on SoundClouds, uh, a member of a group called Soul Food Symphony uh, mm. that was seven women and all women's band, all girls band at Howard. And if you were at Howard at that time, you know them, they opened for homecoming. Just amazing, amazing spirit. Uh, she was also a midwife, a mm. doula, and just mm. a most incredible person. And I'm so glad um, she's a sister daughter to me, mm. but I'm so glad that I was able to spend time with her at Howard's uh, 2022 homecoming. And I want to give a shout out to one of our public officials in Atlanta, Georgia, Inga Willis, who actually stood on the floor of, uh, I believe it's the Senate in Atlanta, and just gave a tribute to Zenzile Wissett, um, mm. an amazing person. And she lives. You mm. know, when we keep the thoughts and keep the words and the deeds of our ancestors, um, they continue uh, to live. And on that floor of, uh, you know, the Atlanta, and I believe it's the Atlanta Senate, you know, she just mentioned that Zora Neale Hurston attended Howard and mm -hmm. was with going and to her own beat, her own drum. Zenzile Wissett was indeed that, an amazing spirit. But today, um, in the spirit of Women's History Month, we have Tara Renee with us who is going to share with us all about the African-American Women in Cinema Festival. So thank you for that. Uh, please, Tara Renee, share with us who you are and whose you are. Thank you. <laughs> 
Well, thank you so very much, uh, Ms. Terry Wisdom. It is an honor to be here on your beautiful, wonderful show. Uh, we are so grateful to have you in the community where we can get real news and what's going on. So really appreciate that so much. Uh, as Ms. Wisdom introduced, I am Tara Renee, the president and founder of African American Women in Cinema Organization. I'm a God person. Right. <laughs> <like> to God. <laughs> and uh, just so uh, happy to be in this era where I can be the champion and the pioneer for the voices of talented storytellers. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so if you would just share um, a little bit about uh, how this uh, amazing festival got started, uh, mm -hmm. who started it, what was the inspiration um, for it? Because 24 years is um, a long time, mm -hmm. you know, and I've heard about it vicariously, mm -hmm. um, you know, and so I want everybody to know more about it. And obviously this is our time. So <laughs> thank you. So um, a while, a long time ago, uh, when I was a little bit younger, <laughs> I received a call from a casting director. She was very hot at the time. She was hired by a major motion picture company. And they were looking for a tall African-American woman who was not a size uh, zero mm -hmm. uh, for a under five role. And under five, just for your audience, means under five lines. Okay. And so, um, so anyway, I got to the audition site and... When I opened up the door, I saw about a thousand women fit the bill and I was in shock. Mm -hmm. I did not realize the lack of opportunities that existed uh, in particular women of color in the industry. And it was at that moment that the advocacy rose up in me. Mm -hmm. Later I found out I am a descendant of a civil rights leader from the 1800s. And so all that was lying dormant and just that moment just brought it to the forefront. And so um, I was I was just so determined <laughs> and passionate to create jobs for women of color in the industry. And I started writing on, uh, working on a screenplay and there I met a young lady and basically told her what, you know, I wanted to do. And from that conversation was only supposed to be a one-time event. And I said, okay, okay. I'll call it. African-American women in cinema. Mm -hmm. And Terry, when it was launched, women from everywhere showed up. And it was wow. at that point that I realized that was the call that I had to answer. Not the audition call. Mm -hmm. That sprung me into this call. And so it started out again as a one-time event and then it began to evolve now into a full-blown film festival. And, okay. an, and a nonprofit organization. Okay, that's amazing. Where was where was uh, the first festival, and when was the first festival? Oh boy, I need yeah. to take my memory pills. Well, I don't mean, <laughs> but where where do you remember where the first festival in was? In Brooklyn. In Brooklyn. Okay. Okay. Uh, and then yeah. migrate to other other venues. Yes. What are some of the venues and? Uh, I'm Terry Wisdom. This is Harlem Network News. For those of you who are just joining, um, I am speaking with Tara Renee, and we are talking about the uh, African uh, American uh, Women's uh, Film Festival. Mm -hmm. Where where were some of the venues? Because I'm I'm trying to, you know, piece it all. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to come up. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, we were at various locations, uh, the Directors Guild of America. Okay. Uh, we were at the Tribeca uh, Film Center. And that was very hilarious because I was doing an interview. And when I was telling the um, reporter where we were, mm -hmm. and so they immediately brought up Mr. Robert De Niro. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I said, 
<laughs> I said, well, you know, I'm not sure if he knows about it, but I'm happy to be in his location. They said, okay. Yeah. So, so those are some of the venues that we. Okay. Did you all ever do anything at the Schomburg or no? Yes, we actually did. Okay. Thank you, Terry. A, a okay. while ago. Yeah, we okay. did. Okay. So like I said, vicariously, because, um, you know, I'm I'm in the film world, but there's so much going on. And that is also why uh, we do Harlem Network News. So we can connect okay. the dots and connect the people and know what's happening. Because I believe that I recall a uh, festival that happened at the Schomburg and some of the filmmakers were staying with me. Oh. And, uh, yeah, because I had a, a guest house at the time. Wow. Um, Harlem Landmark Guest House. And I believe a few of the filmmakers were staying with me. And one of them, which is terrible, because I can't remember her last name. Her name was Yvonne. And um, yeah, and I I don't, I, anyway, you know, she uh, and I attended film school together. And I think she was involved in a lot of grants and different things in Washington, you mm -hmm. know, and um, it'll come to me. But I'm just trying to, like pull the dots and everything together because I'm sure we've been in tandem on this journey. Mm -hmm. And I will mention, because I mentioned it to you in our pre-interview, uh, Madeline Anderson yes. is in the Smithsonian Museum. And one of the, um, she is the first Black woman in the Film Editors Union. And she is my mentor. But mm. ironically, it wasn't African-American uh, women uh, in cinema, but it mm -hmm. was a Black film festival that mm -hmm. she uh, put together mm -hmm. with another filmmaker, St. Clair Bourne. And that oh, was yes. one of the very first Black mm -hmm. film festivals mm -hmm. in New York City. And mm -hmm. um, it was at a private school, I think Dalton on the east side. People mm -hmm. came from all over. Mm -hmm. And I mean, she had films by Usman Semben, the Senegalese, wow. uh, Haile Jarima, mm -hmm. you know, uh, Sankofa, all of mm -hmm. that. And then she went on to um, become head of, like, at that time, Howard University's communication school wow. and did um, a festival down there. Mm -hmm. So um, you're on the right path. And, you know, here we are in in 2024 mm -hmm. and that's still an issue and concern mm -hmm. and give lots of shout outs to people like Ava DuVernay and yes. Nima Barnett and yes. all all those sisters you mm -hmm. know but Nima I know and we kind of mm -hmm. came up together so oh, beautiful. Yeah. so it's a real factor in terms of the roles yeah. a real factor in terms of the folks behind the camera mm -hmm. I mean, I was an editor on a feature film, Tougher Than Leather, with Run DMC. Oh, and wow. literally, being the editor, when I was in 1600 Broad Broadway, people were coming up to the door of the editing room just to look at me because wow. it's an anomaly. Yes. So, yep. real talk. so anyway, mm -hmm. enough of the stories. <laughs> Tell us, um, you know, I, I get the motivation for mm -hmm. the why, but mm -hmm. how has it evolved? Um, mm -hmm. how has it um been received? Mm -hmm. Um, what has your journey, what mm -hmm. has your struggle been, mm -hmm. and where are we right now? Wow, that's a wonderful loaded question. All right. So each year, uh, you know, as we begin to uh do execute the festival, we witness an expansion. So we finally got up to the point where we were showing films, and then after showing films, then we got up to the point where we were actually having prominent industry people uh, host keynote panels. So we had uh, Diane Houston, who had wrote Women of Bruce's Place, uh, Tina Andrews, who wrote Why Do Fools Fall in Love, hosting a writer's panel. And then uh, we began to start honoring those who we felt made a significant contribution and paved the way, but really haven't received a lot of accolades for doing it. And so we started with the Trailblazer Award and then also the Pioneer Award. So we had honored people uh, for the Trailblazer 
at the time, uh, Regina King and Elise Neal and Neil Long. Oh, and wow. they were just so excited. They came, they showed up, got their award uh, for the Pioneer. We honored Leslie Uggams, uh, Maxwell Daphne Reed. Mm -hmm. And so we began to really see the importance and the value uh, that we were bringing in this space as it relates to highlighting women who were and continue to make significant contributions mm -hmm. in the world of film. And so um, after, after you know, uh, implementing those types of programs, then we start getting invited uh, by other media arts organizations to do co-screenings, uh, co-educational panels uh, across the country and then out of the country. So we recently came back last year from Africa oh, and we showed nice. some films uh, on an island uh, in English is called City of Joy. And we were able to show films uh, made by women. And it was the first time they ever saw films made by American black women. Oh, and so we made history over there. Nice. Mm -hmm. Okay, that that's very powerful, and it I guess kind of once again I'm Terry Wisdom. This is Harlem Network News, and I am here uh, with Tara Renee of the uh, African American uh, Cinema <laughs> Women in Cinema Women in Cinema <laughs> Festival. If I get that right, but um, you know, with I, I the other question is, um, and you kind of answered it. But why uh, women in cinema? Why women in cinema? And you is know, it uh, primarily uh, women of color in cinema? Mm -hmm. Where are we with that? Thank yeah. you. So, so thank you, Terry, for that question. So when I, when the audition uh, sparked that whole, triggered me, mm -hmm. I went and did research at the time. I started out with like three of the major unions. So it was like the DGA, WG, uh, WGA, and um, I forgot the other one. Mm -hmm. Oh, SAG. SAG, and, yeah. And, um, and you're so coming, I, not to interrupt you, but you are coming out of an acting background, directing, what? what? Well, I was dibbing and dabbing in everything, Terry, because okay. I had uh, what they called the, I was bit by the entertainment bug, but I didn't know exactly what mm -hmm. it was that mm -hmm. I needed to be doing in entertainment. So I was- okay bit of acting, a little bit of modeling. Okay, okay, <laughs> Went to okay. SBA. Studied. Okay, School of Visual Arts. All right. <laughs> One of my wonderful uh, Lincoln University uh, sisters, my college roommate, uh, Tina Dunkley. She went to School of Visual Arts wow. and went on to uh, become the curator for the Clark Atlanta. Um, oh. Theme. Yeah. So That's wonderful. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, so um, when I start doing the research and I start seeing numbers like 0.03% mm -hmm. women of color getting jobs. Yeah. 12% acting opportunity. You know, 0.06%, you know, directing opportunity. It, would, it blew my mind. I didn't realize how dismal it really was. Mm -hmm. Now it have increased a lot, but still, mm -hmm. you know, no way. I'd, lo I'd love to know um, what the numbers are now. And I, I think um, to interject a little bit, um, me coming into a world of film and television and initially, and, and it's interesting because let's go full circle. I wanted to be an on-air person. And here I am at Harlem Network News, which I've created that venue for myself. However, as I traveled along and I was in journalism school, I gravitated more to being behind the scenes, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. to towards directing, towards acting, towards mm -hmm. writing, um, and towards being an editor, a film and video editor. However, what I realized, and at that time, I thought that being an on-camera person for news or whatever was a bit superficial because I felt like it was like being an actor 
and not really going after and doing my own stories. Mm -hmm. And at that time, it may well have been that. But mm -hmm. what I will say is we only know, in some instances, the things um, that our families have done or that, you know, we've had a grandfather or grandmother into the field. You know, mm -hmm. we know about being a teacher. We know about being a lawyer, a doctor, a social worker. But honestly, I knew nothing about film editing and film. And wow. I was in college. I knew nothing about it. I mean, maybe that's mm -hmm. the age, but I'm saying I was in a journalism class and we had a class in editing and there were these little strips of film hanging in the bin. And I was like, this is crazy. I would never be doing this. This is like overwhelming. <laughs> and so I really came into a career that mm -hmm. I knew nothing about. I always, mm -hmm. as I was growing up, that mm -hmm. I wanted to be like a writer, a lawyer, or a professional ice skater. Let's let's get to ah. that. <laughs> but I'm just saying, I mean, I think that this career, and not necessarily, because we know from the Harlem Renaissance that we had Black filmmakers. Mm -hmm. you know, we know we did. Mm -hmm. And Orl's got children, got wings, and all kinds of, mm -hmm. and I'm, you know, Michelle, <laughs> I mean, we had Black filmmakers, but it's not a career path that we knew about. And obviously, as we are becoming in this techno age, yes. uh, you know, it's even more in terms of what can be done mm -hmm. you know, and what the film world is. But I just wanted to share that um, mm -hmm. in that sense. So continue, please. <laughs> I'm excited <laughs> with our conversation. Oh no, I love it. I love it. So mm -hmm. it was it was through uh the research that we really I really began to see the value of having an entity uh in place where these voices of rich storytelling can come mm -hmm. and share, you know, their experiences and also their work. You know, cuz Terry Again, when you were talking about the film strips, you're absolutely right. When we got started, it was no internet. So you mm -hmm. had to buy either eight millimeter, 16 millimeter, right. 35 millimeter, if you had some money. Projection. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Sound. Mm -hmm. Remember sound yeah. tape? Of course and, I do. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know about Mag Stripe. Woo! I know Go ahead. I, I know about uh you know, uh, what is it? Uh, negative matching. Yes, uh, yes. I, I know about uh, early <laughs> on uh, at, at working at a lot of the uh, networks uh, when it was filmed, we used mm -hmm. to hot splice what went on the air wow. and run down to the film chain. So I know about that. <laughs> Ooh, know yes. About that. Yeah. So, and so, uh, mm hmm so what I was sharing uh, with a, a few folks earlier, actually today, I was speaking on a panel and I told them, I said, you know, the filmmaking process is so tedious and yes. just not a cakewalk at all. Mm -hmm. And when you get finished making the film, I was explaining to them back in the day, you know, you, it, it was not, you couldn't get a major distribution. You just couldn't. Very, very rare. So you would also have to have some monies available to four wall a theater. Mm -hmm. And um, so for some who may not know what that is, rent the theater and then have your friends and family come buy tickets. And hopefully that would be a way that you could recoup some of the costs, you know. And uh, but technology today had leveled a lot of that. And yes, uh, yes. I had talked about that earlier as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, that is why um, it's easier for me to do a Harlem Network News right now. You know, I don't have need a whole big studio, like three cameras, lighting directors, you know, all of that. I mean, of course, we want to take it, you know, to that level, but we're mm -hmm. able to get the information out. I mean, mm -hmm. I think of a filmmaker like Julie Dash, mm -hmm. and one of the dust, it took her mm -hmm. 10 years to make that yep. movie. You yeah. know, so uh, you're definitely onto something. But let's fast forward a little mm -hmm. bit sure. and speak about um, what can we expect at the festival this year? You oh. know, when is it? Um, where is it? And 
what is what's going to happen please thank you well we're really excited terry it's going to be taking place march the 21st through the 23rd it's going to be at the laguardia community college our red carpet opening night is the 21st for the first time in our film festival history we're going to be showing a short film and that's uh, directed by one of our members and the reason why i really uh, believe that we should screen it. It's an exclusive screening. It's because it's dealing with a, it's a young Jewish girl who falls in love with an Italian guy, but his mother disapproves because she has a, a black son from a previous relationship. Mm -hmm. And in the film, the audience will get to see how she reconciled that racism. And so today with all that's going on, I think that well, we believe the story have a uh, the film has a strong story as it relates okay. to that and All what we're right. contending with now. Okay. So that's opening night, and then we're so pleased to uh, say that our uh, New York Public Advocate will be doing a special presentation to our honorees. We have amazing honorees this year. Okay, and that's in the person of uh, Jamani Williams. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so he's going to be honoring our honorees as well. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we're moving on to the next few days where we will be showing some incredible films, Terry. Okay. We got some, I'm so proud of these women. I the love stories that. that they told and the production value, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. And so um, we also uh, incorporate the educational piece where we're going to be talking about independent film producing. We have the former head of programming of TV One, was going to okay. be talking I and mm -hmm. thank you. Um, we're going to have a special one-on-one -on -one conversation with the senior director of the DEI mm -hmm. uh, program at NBC Universal. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to also have a panel on women of color editors, which I was so excited to, to talk <laughs> about. And they oh. are amazing nice. Peabody nice. winners. So really amazing. And we have our youth, our next generation of youth filmmakers. So okay. that's just that's just a, a little uh, tidbit of mm -hmm. what we have going on for those okay. next few days. Okay, that that sounds um, amazing. And so there were workshops, and then mm -hmm. there are uh, films that are going to be screened, and there are honorees, and this is taking place um, over a period of. What is it? Three or four days? Three days. Three, three days. days. Okay. Uh-huh. Okay. That's, that's good. And everything is taking place at LaGuardia uh, College. Community College, yes. Community College, okay. Mm -hmm. And that's in the Long Island City area? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, that sounds phenomenal. Um, how can uh, folks get in touch with you and how can they attend uh, the, uh, the whole series or can they attend parts of the series um and is any part of it virtual because you know we live in that world now um are there going to be you know any virtual things that mm -hmm. people can see in case in case they can't make it mm -hmm. um that that kind of thing yeah yes a few chairs so, yes yes it's a hybrid so we have the live portion for the three days and then the virtual will consist of four programs mm -hmm. uh, we have a screenwriters workshop we have a, a discussion on colorism in film and television mm -hmm. and we also have a panel on women of color in comedy from stage to screen okay. and then and then also is the youth, uh, next generation filmmakers that's where they're going to be featured on our virtual now uh you can go to our website to purchase tickets, which is www.aawic.org. Mm -hmm. And uh, each program, you can purchase a ticket for any single program. Or if you get the all access pass, there's a special discount right now. And you can go to the website and you can put in the code AAWIC24 when you click on the ticket mm -hmm. uh, link and uh, you'll get a discount. So the tickets are normally 175, but it's 150 and that will give you access to all the programs, including the okay. virtual. So that's what, uh, what we're doing now. 
Okay. Okay. Um, I just am so excited and I'm so uh, grateful that I met you uh, out at the uh, Crown Theater. Yes. Uh, one of our illustrious uh, food uh, people, uh, Mr. Ashbell. But, you know, I, I believe that there are no coincidences. So mm. uh, as a filmmaker and you're touching on all the throngs when you said uh, uh, women, uh, Black women with the comedians and you know, literally, uh, one of the films that I edited was uh, a film called "I Be Done Been Was Is," which is on <laughs> Black women comedians. Really, and four different women, and the producer was Deborah Robinson, and we did comedians past, present. We had Alice Arthur, Marsha Warfield, uh, oh. Jane Lewis. You know, and so um, you know, it, it's really a circular world. I'm very excited about what you're saying. And I'm Terry Wisdom, this is Harlem Network News. And certainly um, if you reach out to us, um, Harlem Network News, we'll try to make sure you get connected um, and you can reach us at harlemnetworknews.org. Uh, you can call us directly at 646-261-5397 or harlemnetworknews at gmail.com. And uh, just, you know, ask about the African-American women in cinema, and we will definitely hook you up. <laughs> um, this is just um, so exciting uh, and just so amazing. Now, you mentioned uh, something, and this is Tara Renee. Um, <laughs> and what is your title, again, with the festival, just so folks that may just be tuning in? Sure. I, well, I'm the executive producer of the festival. Okay. Uh, and uh, the founder and president of the organization. Okay. Okay. So that's mm -hmm. covering all bases. Um, I love it. And you mentioned something about people who are members. What is what is that about? Please share. Thank sure. You. So we decided to create memberships for those who just want to be connected to a community of like-minded people. Mm -hmm. And we have... Uh, three tiers there's the complimentary first tier mm -hmm. and basically you'll just you'll be placed on our e-blast list so you can be abreast of the okay. program that we have coming up and then okay. there's the second level where there is it is a paid membership and then the third level which is called our a-list membership uh mm -hmm. that's the top tier in which you'll get the newsletter your bio will be placed on file uh, for production requests, we get production requests uh, at times for for uh, projects, and okay. so we submit our members for consideration. Mm -hmm. I love it. Um, you're doing the work, <laughs> and that's what we have to do. Uh, just make sure people are informed and you know understand uh, all of the possibilities um, mm -hmm. there are. And um, as Tara Renee mentioned, this is a rough, tough business. It's not for the faint of heart, but it's a rewarding business. It's how we can get out our information in a variety of formats um, to just connect to people. But um, it's definitely an art form. It's mm -hmm. definitely a skill. It's definitely um, just a total labor um, of love. Mm -hmm. So I thank you for sharing. I thank you for doing all that you're doing. And um, if you could, I know you mentioned, and I want to ask you, what's the ask and what is needed? Because I believe when we had some of our pre-conversations, you were speaking about wanting to be able to sponsor young people to mm -hmm. come to the event. So if you could share a little bit about that, because I definitely believe um, it takes a village mm -hmm. and we've got to be intergenerational. So yes. if you could just share... Uh, what that's about. And I appreciate you. Thank you, Terry. So uh, we always uh, try to create an opportunity for young filmmakers and content creators to share in what we're doing, because it's so important that they get that level of exposure and mm -hmm. encouragement and hopefully be inspired. And so uh, we've allocated a certain number of tickets to be sponsored Mm -hmm. um, by anyone who may be interested. And then once those tickets are purchased, we then 
reach out and invite them to come uh, complimentary so they can okay. network, they can see the films mm -hmm. and ex get that whole experience. Okay, yeah, seeing different films uh, is really a part of um, the journey yes. of becoming a filmmaker and just, it opens up uh, a whole uh, a whole world. So all of the films, just once again, all of the films that are going to be screened are women filmmakers. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. So what we had done, uh, we had expanded, meaning that we wanted to make sure that it is a woman above the line, woman of color above the line. So either they have written it or they produced it or they have directed it. So yes. Okay, okay, mm -hmm. okay. Um, that is phenomenal. So we're going to wind down. We're going to wrap up. <laughs> and um, if you would just share, and I'm Terry Wisdom, this is Harlem Network News, and I'm here uh, with the amazing Tara Renee. Um, but if you would just give us some some closing words, some closing statement, and then once again, share um, how folks can find out about this uh, film festival and exactly when and where it is. Thank you. Thank you so much, Terry. Well, first of all, a big thanks uh, for to you for having me on your wonderful and amazing show. Uh, certainly looking forward to continue to be a support to you and all that you do, because it is important that you are here sharing the news the way that we need to hear it. I just want to encourage your, your uh, listeners today that, you know, uh, in spite of the obstacles and many things that we face in this life, I really desire that you just take a moment and just basically understand that you have what it takes to make it. Whatever the dream is that you believe that you should pursue, that nothing is impossible. And I want to encourage uh, you with those words today because a lot of times we will hear negativity first before positivity. And so I just want to be that voice to say, you have what it takes pursue your dreams, and there's nothing impossible to you. And so we look forward to seeing you at this year's film festival at LaGuardia Community College, taking place March 21st through the 23rd. You can visit www.aawic.org for the full itinerary. It's a hybrid, so it's live programs, online programs, and Get your ticket and let us celebrate this occasion, honoring Women's History Month. Okay. Well, thank you for that. And uh, we're going to close. I'm Terry Wisdom. This is Harlem Network News. Please reach out to us. Um, anything that you want to know, uh, we're up on our YouTube channel. We need you to subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. And our shows stay up so you can always... Um, take a look back at things and you can also share it, you know, in every which way we're on all the social media platforms. Uh, we do need you to make your donations to harlemnetworknews.org or you can zell us or cash app us because this is uh, how we stay alive. We mm -hmm. matter, you matter, um, and we, we have to keep it moving. And I know that our news and information is more critical than ever. Um, we're finding out about things. And a lot of times, even though we're in the circles and we're in the same industries, we don't know everything. Right. There's so much going on. So I'm so grateful um, as a media person, as a film person to have you on here. And like I said, vicariously, I've known about it connected, but you know, I haven't been, and certainly Harlem Network News will talk. I want to come out and Cover oh, something. that'd be wonderful. For sure. Yeah. So thank you very much. And um, this is Harlem Network News. And this is what we do. And um, prayers for change for a better world. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. what we stand for. So mm -hmm. thank you, thank you, thank you. And have a great day. And as she said, stay positive. Um, yes, you can. And yes, we will. We got this. <laughs> so thank you. Take care. Blessings. Thank you.